Welcome, my name is Kevin, and this is the Bible Artist Podcast, and I'd like to thank Mitch Hudson for joining us as our guest today. In addition to having served as an AD for The Chosen, Mitch is the creator, writer, and director of a brand new Bible show, uh, The Promised Land, which just released its pilot a couple weeks ago on YouTube. And yeah, I, I actually just published my review of Promised Land earlier this week. And I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was genuinely funny, entertaining, and a, a clever premise too. So for those who haven't had a chance to watch the show yet, yeah, Mitch, would you be able to just kind of introduce us to the, the premise? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me, Kevin. I so appreciate it. And thanks for the, uh, thanks for the good review. Yeah, so The Promised Land uh, is a uh, half-hour comedy show uh, in the style of The Office, but it's about Moses and the Israelites on their journey from Egypt to The Promised Land. So with it being in the style of the office, it means that, you know, we we're basically following Moses and his family around with a documentary crew, you know, and occasionally we have these kind of pull aside talking head. Hey, what just happened? Tell us what you're feeling about all this. You know, we have these kind of moments where the, uh, the characters are talking to us and letting mm -hmm. us know, hey, here's what I think about what you're seeing, you know, and here's my perspective on it. So with it kind of gives us that goal of like we can we can have some kind of funnier moments we can kind of follow all that but we can also get to know these characters in a very direct way because they're not mm. just acting you know they're not just characters in the show they're also talking to us mm. uh, but yeah that's kind of the premise of the show yeah and and i just genuinely thought that the, you did a great job of balancing both uh, humor and having it genuinely feel like a legitimate comedy uh, while at the same time doing some thoughtful stuff with the, the biblical adaptation, um, your presentation of the, the story of like Exodus 18, I thought was like actually spot on, like, and you followed it pretty, pretty closely. So I was impressed by that. Uh, yeah, but I, I imagine that uh, like some viewers, when they hear, you know, comedy show, mockumentary, uh, they may be a little skeptical or a little uneasy with bringing those two things together. So could, could you kind of make a case for, you know, this mixture of comedy and like a biblical story. Yeah, totally. Well, you know, I think it's funny. I think the first thing that gets people nervous is when they hear the term mockumentary, they're like, wait a minute, mock and the Bible. I don't want those things to go together. And the truth is, I don't want those things to go together either. But the mocking part of that term, the mockumentary, it just means fake documentary. Like it's not an actual documentary. It's simulated, you know, so it's the only the only reason that word is even part of it is because it's not we didn't actually go back in time and capture this like a documentary. So it's fake, you know, but um, but yeah, I, in terms of, you know, the comedy element, I think I, I really appreciate that you said that we got Exodus 18 basically uh, right and we try to portray it correctly. And I think that's a big part of uh, our heart for the show is to get it right while mm. still having fun. You know, it's and, and I think that's where it's important. If it's like the, sh the show and the stories in the Bible are about people and people mm. can be funny. People are funny. Mm. People make mistakes. They fall over. They do things that don't work out. And they, you know, they, they there there's a lot of just general comedy about being a person who's trying their best to do a task that feels impossible. And so mm. then, uh you know, I feel like with that, when we're approaching these characters and we're approaching Moses and Miriam and Aaron and everyone else who's in the story, yes, they are in the Bible, which is a very sacred text, but they are people and people mm -hmm. are not sacred. You know, people yeah. are meant to be related to, right? We're mm -hmm. meant to learn from these characters. And so for me, that's where I'm, I'm like, it's actually great to see this with a comedic perspective, because I think when you can kind of laugh and relate to what's happening, then when you get to the authentic moments where we are trying to express the heart of it, by then you've already had fun and gotten to know these characters and it's not all been serious the whole time. So every, you know, every time in the Bible where a serious moment happens, we're going to take it mm -hmm. seriously. But then it's those in between moments where we can have some fun, we can be a little bit lighthearted, uh, and we can get to know the characters in hopefully a, a jovial way. Yeah, I, I definitely sense that in the pilot episode uh, when kind of at the end Jethro has his his moment uh, with Moses. Yeah, there there is like a, a seriousness to it, or you're not totally you know you're not making fun of Jethro's advice or anything like that. Right. Um, but yeah, like you said, the humor is in in the characters themselves and kind of right. the hu humanity and limitations and weaknesses and things like totally. that. Totally. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and also too, you know, even that story, right at the, at the end of the day, you know, what is that story? It's a story about someone whose father-in-law comes to visit and tells him that everything he's doing is wrong. You know, it's like, okay, 
that's kind of funny, you know, mm -hmm. and then, but it does, you know, ultimately end up being a very good and very sweet thing. But, yeah. you know, at first it's kind of, that, that's really why I decided to start here with the show because, you know, when the, when the concept was brought to me and they're like, Hey, can you write and direct a show from this premise? Basically I, the, the producers came to me and said, Hey, do you think you can make a comedy show about Moses, but in the style of the office, mm -hmm. you know, here's the premise that we have and take a look. And, uh, and I was trying to figure out where to start. Uh, the recommendation had basically been to start with the 10 commandments, but mm -hmm. I kind of felt like maybe we should back up a little bit and see mm -hmm. where is like a good place to get to know these characters without necessarily big, huge, epic things happening. Mm -hmm. And I rediscovered that story about Jethro and I was like, well, this is it. I mean, this is, you know, this is uh, a premise that is used in other comedy movies, you know, whatever mm -hmm. the, the family dynamics that I want my father-in-law to be proud of me, but he's also kind of, you know, stern and wants to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. I was like, that's it. That's where you can start and also get to know everyone and establish this idea that Moses can't lead alone. He needs help. He needs to trust others to do so. Yeah. I thought also the kind of the cold open with the war between Amalek and, and the Israelites. And how, again, it's like a funny moment, even as you're reading scripture, if you like mm -hmm. actually imagine that moment, uh, there is like a kind of inherent yeah. humor. With Moses like, holding his arms up. Yeah. It's, it's one of those Bible stories where you're like, Dang, like you can kind of like it, it, there's a lot of epic things happening, but you're just imagining like, so hang on, he couldn't, he had others on either side of him holding his arms up. That's, that's kind of hilarious, even though yeah. it's important, but it's also very a funny visual for sure. So it, it sounds like as far as kind of when it, with the humor, as far as like where you draw a line or where you like try to, you know, keep things honoring scripture, uh, there's there's a sense of like, there are certain kind of somber moments or important moments in scripture that you're not going to want to undercut with the humor as uh, am I kind of getting, getting that right? Or yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I want to make sure that the parts that we need to learn from the parts that are, Hey, take this seriously in the scripture. I mean, you should take all, all scripture seriously, but I'm saying is like the moments where the characters are having something serious happen to them. I'm not going to mm. undercut it. The comedy is going to be from everything kind of around and leading up yeah. to and in between those moments. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I saw that, like I said, in, in the pilot episode, and I, I thought you did a, a great job of kind of maintaining that, that balance. Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Oh, okay. um, as far as like the, with the mockumentary style. So you said, you kind of like it because it allows you to have that that direct connection with with the characters while also kind of uh, telling the story. I'm curious, like, is like the is the Office your favorite mockumentary, or do you have any other favorite ones that kind of brought inspiration? Yeah. Or, I mean, I definitely love the Office. I also I love Parks and Recreation. I think Parks and Rec mm -hmm. is maybe even a more direct kind of inspiration for the show because I think in some ways it's a little bit sweeter sometimes than the yeah. Office, which can occasionally be not not mean spirited at all but like it can there are times in the office where part of the joke is people kind of being over it whereas yeah. in parks and rec a lot of times the joke is people's eagerness to accomplish something mm. not panning out you know what i mean so i think parks and rec mm. is maybe a closer comparison for our show but I, I yeah i mean i love them all i watch parks and rec the office abbott elementary what we do in mm. the shadows you know all those all those types of shows I just it's a because these shows have been popular since i was a teenager it's yeah. been kind of a big part of shaping my comedic sensibilities just because it's so ingrained in my system you know i was mm. i mean i would have been i think t uh 13 when the office started coming out and so yeah, yeah at that time or at least the, the you know the american office and so yeah when that was coming mm. out i was like what is this yeah. You know, and I think it, I think it just got ingrained in, in myself, mm. people of my generation too. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Mm. So kind of in addition to that kind of part of the, the inspiration for, for the project, there's also been like lots of adaptations of, you know, the story of Moses or the story of the Exodus, um, you know, Charlton Heston, the 10 commandments, mm -hmm. uh, Prince of Egypt from DreamWorks. Uh, even yeah. I think like Mel Brooks has uh, a part with Moses in the history of the yeah. world. That's so right. I'm curious, like, did you also draw inspiration from any other kind of previous takes on, on Moses or on kind of the story in general? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, maybe not directly, but I think, I think there is kind of sometimes a consistent sort of, uh, 
interpretation of who Moses is that you can see in a lot of those stories, mm -hmm. right? Like Moses being someone who is very set on following what God wants for the mm -hmm. people uh, and, and, and being a leader. I, but I think, but I think one thing I wanted to do differently is that I do think a yeah. lot of those projects, other than Prince of Egypt, I think mm -hmm. a lot of those projects don't really humanize Moses that much. They kind of mm -hmm. make him more of like a, listen to me, you know, kind of character. Yeah. And that's, and that even scripturally is really not who Moses was. I mean, he was yeah. very resistant to even being a leader. He didn't mm -hmm. think he was qualified. He kind of clearly in the Bible acts with passion for anything he's doing. You know what I mean? Like he kind of wears his heart on his sleeve. He, he gets upset mm -hmm. at the Egyptian treatment of Israelites and he, you know, kills someone by, you know, whether by accident or, or on purpose, but he, he definitely acts with passion and he also which sometimes puts his foot in his mouth. And he also doesn't think that he's right to have this job. Mm. He, you know, he kind of mm. argues with God about it in yep. the Bible. You know, he doesn't think he's worthy. He doesn't think he should do it. And so, you know, the portrayals that I've seen where Moses is kind of this big lofty character, mm -hmm. I don't know that that's correct. I, I don't yeah. think that that's actually how he was in the Bible. And that's mm. what I wanted to do a little bit differently. But no, I think what's cool about those other projects is just the way that they show the scope. And so when mm. we were, when we were making our show, like even though our visual style is like The Office, I wanted to still feel like there was depth and scope and sometimes mm. accidental epicness in the mm. background. You know, like you mm. kind of feel like, oh, the dunes just go on for forever and there's people mm. and tents and there's millions of, you know, people out here who are part of this. I think the scope is sort of the main inspiration from those other projects. Mm. Yeah. No, that's... Plus Prince of Egypt is just beautiful and everyone should watch it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Great movie. Yeah. Um, but I, I like the point that you made earlier about how sometimes the, the dramatic presentation of these stories, sometimes they can kind of have their own inaccuracy as far as like making these characters totally. so larger than life. Whereas like a, a comedy sometimes can, can tell certain truths that, that don't come across in a more dramatic representation because they it shows some of the humanity, which is in like the biblical uh, portrait. So I, I really totally. ap appreciated that. Yeah. And I think that's a unique contribution that your show will have, I think. So, yeah, well, thank you. No, and also too, you kind of pointed out something that I think is very sneaky about comedy that a lot of people don't realize that they can do, right? which is that comedy in order to work, comedy has to feel true. You know, mm. it, it needs to, there has to be something that is true for a joke to come across. Mm. And, you know, and that's where ultimately you kind of, when they work, you kind of believe comedies sometimes even mm. more, you know, like when we, when we put on shows like the office or friends or, you know, whatever people like to watch and it feels like you're just kind of hanging out with these people mm. it's because they feel real and they feel true. And there's something that kind of resonates and feels mm. familiar, comfortable, whatever that is. Uh, and you can do that with comedy in a way that you can't kind of do it with drama sometimes. Oh, that's really, I want to sit with that for a little bit. Uh, a little yeah. Bit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So as far as like when it comes to the, the story of Moses and the Israelites and everything, what do you find kind of, what do you connect with uh, the most in that story? And what do you think kind of it has to offer for your viewership, whether that they're Christians or Jewish or non-religious? Like, why do you think this story has like a, a lot of value for kind of our, our current moment or our culture? Mm. I think think that with this show, because we are kind of a different tone, I think it's important right now because there's a lot of good Christian content that's coming out. I mean, I think for a long time, like Christian content was not necessarily known for being good art. And I think, you know, now we're getting more that are like that, you know, with The Chosen, mm -hmm. obviously, and with other projects like what the Erwin Brothers are making and, and things like that. And I think what is important about our show in that is that it offers a different tone. I mm. think hopefully for some people who are intimidated by a serious faith-based production, mm. I think, well, you know, hopefully, I mean, honestly, whether, whether or not you're a believer, I hope when you watch the show, you think it's funny and interesting, you know, mm. and, uh, and I hope it is good art in that sense. And so yeah. then I hope if, in, if you do enjoy it, it also can kind of stimulate some conversations about scripture and faith in a way that maybe isn't as possible with more dramatic shows. I think people can be yeah. just intimidated to say, well, I don't know if I want to watch something that's going to make me cry and think about what I believe in, but yeah. I might watch something that might make me laugh and think about what I believe in, you know? So I think it, I think it provides kind of a helpful alternative for people who are nervous to engage with faith in such a serious way right out the mm. gate. 
you know? Yeah, I, I really like that. And it, it just, you know, I really admire kind of taking this more creative alternative approach to a, a story that a lot of people have heard, you know, it's, it's pretty well known even in our current cultural context, but it taking the alternate approach that you are doing, it forces people to, yeah, to see the, the story in a different way, to reevaluate mm -hmm. the characters to, well, like you said, not doing it in a, a way that is intimidating, uh, feels like work because uh, it's enjoyable. It's entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think, and I think it's so much, you know, what's been really great about the chosen is that the chosen gives you a great way to kind of bridge the conversation with people. Cause you can, rather than asking them like, mm -hmm. Hey, what's your spiritual life? Like, you know, you can kind of just say like, Hey, you ever watched the chosen, mm -hmm. you know, and then you can, and you can start to kind of have that conversation in that way. And I think, yeah, with this, you know, you can say, Hey, just watch this opening scene. You know, mm. just, just check out this part, just check out, you know, this joke that's in the show and it's, you know, these characters are doing it and hey, if you want to watch the whole thing, go check it out. And it's mm. about Exodus and it's about Moses. Mm. Take a look. Yeah. So I'm curious, you, you've worked on The Chosen a little bit and yeah. I've done a few different like actor interviews with people from The Chosen. And one of the nice. things that I've heard kind of consistently is just how the set of the chosen and the production feels different. You know, it feels like it's got a, a culture and a, a vibe that is healthy and that is uplifting. Um, I'm curious, are there any lessons that you've learned from working on the chosen that you are trying to kind of bring to, to the promised land and how you conduct uh, your set? Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, I love hearing that people are saying that because that's, that's huge. And that's a big reflection on sort of, you know, my, my bosses and, and, and the department that I work in. So on the chosen, I'm a second, second assistant director. I'm part of the AD team. The AD has kind of set the tone for the set with how you, mm. with how you run things, how you, how you organize things. Adam Drake, who's the first AD, I think is just an, an incredible leader mm. and someone who, you know, wants to make sure done everything that we're getting done while also valuing the people who are helping you do it. And I think that's mm. uncommon for that position. And he gives us a great job of it. And yeah, in terms of the carryover into our show, I think The Chosen definitely has provided a great example with that tone of, hey, when you're making a project like this, you know, at the end of the day, you don't want to be just bulldozing over your crew and making a terrible experience for the cast. But hey, we made a great mm. show. You know, I think ultimately the success of that ends up feeling a lot more hollow when it mm. feels like the people who made you do it didn't enjoy the production they, they weren't mm. grateful to have done it they, they would have rather have not done it i think uh i think you've you've kind of shot yourself in the foot when you run your set like that so i definitely mm. want to make sure that our culture on the future of the show continues to be very good mm. the pilot went well and people wanted to come back and I, I want to keep that going as we make more episodes very soon well i guess speaking of that yeah what is kind of your your vision of where things are going to go like do you have a, a set uh in terms of like I want to do this many seasons or, you know, this is kind of where I'm, what I think I'm hoping that the, the show will eventually become. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I want to make 40 episodes and a feature film. Okay. That's the goal. So oh, you've seen the first nice. episode. So 39 more episodes uh, and a movie at some point throughout that process. And uh, yeah, so that's, I don't, I'm not sure how that'll shake down in terms of seasons. Uh, this first season we're doing is going to be um, a little bit shorter than maybe some other seasons. It's only going to be six mm -hmm. episodes total with the pilot. Okay. And, uh, and once we are, once we're able to make that, yeah, we'll have five more episodes to film basically before okay. uh, people see anything else. But yeah, we, uh, so it might be four seasons, might be five seasons or six. I'm not totally sure, but yeah, 40 episodes in a feature. That's, mm. that's the goal. Do you, do you ever watch Community? Um, oh yeah, six seasons yeah, like, in a movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Big, yeah. I, I, I've always thought that was such a great, just like, phrase. I'm still waiting for that movie, um, but I, uh, yeah. yeah, I definitely took inspiration from that. Of like, you know what? Let's have a plan. Let's mm. have a, uh, a plan for how many we hope to make. So would the the movie be like the the capstone at the end, or like you'll 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 see. It's gonna okay. be good. Okay, it's okay. gonna be good. It's gonna be it's mm. gonna be. Uh, I think something maybe a little bit unexpected, but it'll be okay. Great. Yeah. And as far as kind of like where things are at, it sounds like the first few episodes, like you're, you're feeling pretty confident that you'll be kind of moving ahead with those or like, do you have to work on getting funds or what's, what's it look like as far as like kind of development or like getting the, the production kind of continuing? 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we are, we are very hopeful that we will be able to film the next five episodes this fall. Uh, there's a couple of things that still need to come together to make that happen, but I think they will come together. It's looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, if everything all, all works out, uh, then yeah, we should be able to film five more episodes later this, later this year, and then hopefully have them widely available by next summer. That's awesome. And is it, is the production like the funding for it? Is it, I haven't seen like a, like a crowdfunding campaign. Is it mm -hmm. uh, more through like a production company and kind of investors and things like that? Or yeah, it's, yeah, we're not doing crowdfunding for this first season right now. It's all, we're all looking at just private direct investors, uh, people who want to partner with us to hopefully build something that will have multiple seasons, many episodes, uh, et cetera, for the future. That's awesome. Yeah. So I do want to kind of circle back to, to the show a little bit, but first kind of we're on this uh, train of thought since like kind of the, the funding aspect of it sounds like is, is more from the, the investors. Yeah. What are like ways that people, you know, who are, are fans of the show who watch it and, and enjoy it, how can they be kind of supporting your work, uh, helping it to continue? And um, yeah. 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 I mean, right now, the biggest thing you can do to support us is just to, if you haven't watched the pilot, check it out. And then if you have seen it, just share it with your friends, you know, leave a comment if you liked it uh, and and tell everyone you know about it. I mean, that's, that's what's been yeah. huge for us is just the people who have, you know, messaged me and on Instagram or, or whatever and have said, hey, I loved it. And I showed, mm -hmm. you know, I showed my friends and they watched it twice mm -hmm. and, you know, all that. That's so exciting for us. And that's the biggest way to help. And And then if you want you know, to support in ways of just, of besides just watching the show, we do have like a merch store. If you feel like, Hey, mm -hmm. you, if I, the, the promise sign, you can also wear the promise sign, you know, I've got one of the shirts on right now. Yes. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's a way to help us financially if that's mm -hmm. of interest to you, but obviously no pressure. Mm -hmm. Get the tribal insurance. Down, if comfortable. Yeah. Down the, down the road, you could do like a promise land, uh, you know, like branded, mana or you know i don't know yeah like yeah 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 you're right there's some fun staff, things you could probably like do staff that yeah 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 oh that would be cool yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be great <laughs> i circling back to the show a little bit i had a couple other questions mm -hmm. on it do you have like a kind of a favorite character in the show uh that so far from the the pilot that you really enjoy i i, I love them all but i definitely i think i have the most fun writing scenes for the egyptian character just because oh, it's yeah. so so completely free if that makes sense yeah, like i yeah, yeah. no one at moses and miriam and aaron and cora joshua support they're all characters who are in the bible and so i need to make sure that i'm like staying yeah. authentic and correct to you yeah. know hey i gotta i gotta get these beats right i gotta get these stories right but with, with mm -hmm. Shisisi, we just made him up so you know it's it's kind of mm -hmm. it's kind of fun to have him he can he can kind of be a sort of a, a catch-all for any just mm. other ideas I have for the show because I don't have to tie him to anything. He can kind of be sort of anything. And that was that was a lot of fun for me. Yeah, I, I like the concept of that character. Like maybe, you know, who knows if it's actually like plausible, but it for the genre of the show and everything, like it, it was yeah. a really fun, like it, it works well as like a, a window character, you know, someone mm. who's outside of the, the camp. But then, yeah, you can kind of have free reign for him to do kind of more crazy antics or exactly yeah and i liked kind of the the cat and mouse between him and and cora so and cora um, yeah yeah that i think my favorite so character was miriam in the the pilot i yeah. i liked kind of her yeah like uh, just some of the the tensions or the um the place that that character is in so yeah i'm yeah. really looking forward to seeing where where her character goes oh she's you know. so she's so good too i mean shireen is such a great actress and mm. she just kind of got it, you know. We were we were mm. spoiled by the cast that we got because they just they just got it, you know. Like they mm. it's it's a it's a very specific type of show. It's a very yeah, yeah. kind of unusual thing. And so it's like, all right, how do we, you know, it's sometimes with comedy, people approach it and they start thinking to themselves, "Oh, I need to be funny," you mm. know. And I think and I think the cast members were great about kind of just understanding it's actually best when I don't think I'm funny. It's best when I'm just mm. fully committing to whatever is happening, you know? And, yeah. and, and Miriam is a great example of that. I mean, she just, the, the full commitment to her personality and to what she's doing is so evident on screen. She's yeah. I'm, I'm also a big fan of Miriam in the show. Yeah. And I like how like her story, it connects to, forward to kind of, 
stuff in like numbers, right? Where there, the Bible actually talks about Miriam and, and Moses, his wife having, having some issues. Yeah. So you're already kind of like, you're setting up kind of that, that future story down the road. Totally. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm curious, like, do you have any like tips? So me and some friends and kind of one of my other podcasts series, uh, we've got yeah. this, this kind of creative exercise that we're doing where we were discussing how theoretically we would adapt the story of David's time in the wilderness when he's the, the head of this outlaw band, oh, but not focus yeah. on, on David, but on his, his outlaws. On the guys. So I'm curious yeah, yeah, yeah. if you have any tips on like how you kind of mine the biblical text for, mm. you know, character, like character details and uh, conflicts yeah. and drama and things like that. Like what's your process look like uh, with that? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think for me, you know, when I'm going through the scriptures, and this might be something that could help you with what you're doing as well. Don't don't miss a word. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like like really take a look at the words and what they mean because I think when you when you read it, you're kind of like, okay, well, hang on a second. That word mm -hmm. is there, right? And you can also look at other, you know, like the the different translations of the Bible. You know, like look at yep. different versions and whatnot. And you know, when I'm reading through, I'll read a couple of different versions. I'll read, you know, sort of behind the text, people examining what the text says or, or mm -hmm. sometimes commentaries. But I, I really just kind of stick as much as I can to the words that are in the Bible and just mm -hmm. look at, well, what does that mean? Right. Like when mm -hmm. it says when it says that, uh, let's see, the there's there's a there's a uh, a part in Exodus, for instance, with Moses, mm -hmm. right, where he after he's gone up and down Mount Sinai a few times and he's at some point set up an altar at the base of Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. It says that he, you know, they do a sacrifice and he takes uh, some of the blood of the sacrifice and he, he puts it on the 12 kind of pillars that are around this altar. And then it says that he, as he's kind of speaking and consecrating people, he throws some of the blood on the people. Hmm. And I was like, interesting. He throws some of the blood on the people. And I was kind of like, well, what is that? I mean, that must be just like the front row, right? Like if you're in the front row, you, you're almost like in the splash zone, you know, like of, of what's happening there. And I was like, so that's, that's interesting. You know what I mean? But it's, it's one of those mm -hmm. things you kind of, you can kind of miss it when you're just reading it. Cause it's like, okay, mm -hmm. well, so he does this and he, yeah, he does the blood on the altars and he does the blood on the people. And then he goes on, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's like every detail can help when you're trying to shape yeah. sort of the, the world and the story that's there. So I'd say that probably the same thing with David's story. Like just take yeah. a look. Hey, you know, whatever, whatever details are there, make the mm. most of them and that'll yeah, help. That's really helpful. Yeah. I guess just more generally, do you have any advice or encouragement for kind of aspiring filmmakers or, you know, showmakers or uh, writers? Yeah. Things that have, have helped you or encouraged you. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I think it's so, it's so difficult to write. I think people don't necessarily acknowledge that enough that that just the sitting down and writing is very hard and i also think it's especially difficult when you are just staring at a blank page trying to figure mm -hmm. out what happens next um and i think for me writing in terms of the actual scripts is basically the last thing that i do i do a lot before that with writing i do a lot of mm -hmm. outlining uh, i'll even what i often do is i'll, I'll make a voice memo <laughs> on my phone oh. and it sounds like an insane person, but I'll literally just tell the story of the episode and I'll walk mm. through like this happens and then we cut to this and then this happens. And mm. I'll do that a couple of times as I'm kind of planning it out. So that when I get to the phase of actually writing, it's more like building a house from the blueprints that already exist. Mm. You know, you're not, when you're building a house. You don't just say, well, should we put a wall there or there? Like you already know well before you get mm. to that point. And so I think, I think that kind of takes some of the pain of writing out mm. a little bit by just do as much as you can in terms of planning it out before mm. you write. At least for me, that helped me a lot. Um, and yeah. so, yeah, if that helps other other writers, I would say measure measure twice, cut once. You know, mm. get your get your outline in, in a good shape before you start writing that script. Yeah, no, that that's really helpful. We talked earlier, kind of about some of the the values of of a biblical adaptation from the perspective of like the audience. So like, you know, yeah. it can make the story a little less intimidating, it can help people see things from a different perspective, see the characters as, as humans. I'm curious, do you feel like there are any benefits for you like personally as, as the writer or creator, as you're doing this, this process of reading the, the stories really closely 
imagining um yeah do you feel like that has has benefited you like on a on a personal level definitely yeah i think i i think i know these stories a lot more than I did, which I think is always helpful, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, it's even similar to on The Chosen when we, when we, whenever I've, I've been on the show since the first season. And so each mm -hmm. season, when we get the scripts for that next season mm -hmm. uh, and I read through them, a lot of times I'm like, man, is this in the Bible? And then I go mm -hmm. back and I read it. And then when we have filmed those episodes, those scenes that are in the Bible, I think mean a lot more to me because now I've had kind of a personal sort of experience with those scenes, you know, in some mm -hmm. way or another. And I think it's been the same for me with, with making the pilot, with writing these episodes, you know, what I will, every time I think for the rest of my life, when I read Exodus 18, I'm going to imagine our episode. I'm going to imagine these cast members. I'm going to think about, uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to read the text, but I'm going to probably picture in my head, Jethro as Tucker Smallwood and Moses as Wasim Namani. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think it, and I think that's good. I think, I think for me, I'm a very visual learner. And so when I have yeah. a visual, uh, I think it makes it a lot more rewarding for me. I've like enjoyed that process myself of like starting to like visualize the stories and not just having them go by or feel like a very abstract, but having them as you start to visualize and imagine them and like tackle them as a writer. Um, yeah, it forces you to, to humanize them and to realize that these are are real events that happened. Um, yeah. Right. And like you said, you, you get to know them at a, at a much deeper levels. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have any other kind of hopes for, um, yeah, just for the promised land and kind of the impact that it will have or what kind of people will, will get from engaging with the show? Man, I think my biggest hope would be that, you know, I think I think audiences like my age and, and younger will kind of have like a show that for them kind of fills that same sort of want as when you are watching another show like The Office or Parks and Rec. You know, I know a lot of people who when they're making breakfast, they'll just put Parks and Rec on. Yeah. You know? It gets in yeah. the background. Doesn't doesn't even matter if they're watching it. It just feels nice yep. to have it on. You know? Mm. And I would love for the promised land to be that for some people. I'd love to have mm. enough episodes and enough good content that People have already seen it, you know, maybe once or twice or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they just, they're going about their day and they're like, you know, let's just pop it on and have it hanging mm -hmm. out in the background. You know, I think that would be such a dream come true for me, just to provide a sort of fun entertainment that people just like hanging out with. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's always been very, very special to me. Um, another hope would be, I, I mean, I would just love to see and hear about, you know, just youth groups at church checking it out. You know, I grew up, yeah. I grew up going to church. My parents were Christians and. And I was Christian from a young age. And I think, I think if I was a teenager in church and, you know, whatever youth group night, they're like, Hey, we're going to watch the promise. And I, I think I would have been mm -hmm. thrilled. And so mm -hmm. I hope that that's the case for other people as well. Yeah. I, I worked in youth ministry for several years and yeah, I, I'm not currently in it, but uh, yeah. I could see a show like the promised land being great as far as like, it's fun to, to watch. Like it doesn't feel like a chore. It doesn't feel like, kind of like cheesy or bad Christian comedy. But as kids watch it, they'll pick up on a lot of like biblical, um, biblical stories, biblical characters, any, even like, you know, the themes and ideas um, in those stories, not in a like belabored way, but just naturally organically, uh, like they pick up stories from kind of their favorite properties and uh, storylines. So yeah, yeah I, I think that's really cool. And yeah. I could totally see how it would feel kind of like, yeah, like the the ultimate accomplishment. If yeah, yeah, the the show reaches that point where it just becomes like a comfort show for people. Mm -hmm. I really hope that that uh, that's possible. So, I hope so um, too, man. Watch, we'll wait, and see. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Is there anything else that you want to share with people, kind of about how they can learn more about the show, where they can get updates, other kind of plans that you have uh, coming up? Yeah, I mean, the best way to get updates and see what's happening for our show is just to follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, YouTube. Like that's that's where we put a lot of the, the most up-to-date announcements about anything that we're doing is on those social media platforms. Um, we hope to have more announcements about future episodes very soon. Um, and we, uh, until then... Um, yeah, I guess keep following along and we'll try to keep you guys as up to date yeah. as possible. And then in terms of, yeah, other projects, there are a couple of projects that are in development that we're working on that are that are even separate from the promised land. 
uh, and we'll have more announcements about that uh, hopefully very soon too. I'm staying. I'm staying busy. It's been so. It's been so wild mm. prepping for this while working on the chosen at the same time, and then also having you know what. But there's this other script that I have that's been coming together, and there's people who maybe might be able to make that happen. So yeah, hopefully, mm. hopefully we'll have lots of cool stuff for everyone very soon. Awesome. Well, yeah. Thank you so much, Mitch, for for joining us. I've yeah, I really benefited from some of your encouragement and uh, the the tips that you shared. And yeah, I, I just thought that it was really cool to hear your heart for the show and how you're kind of bringing together yeah both the humor, but also being very uh, thoughtful about the the biblical stuff. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for for what you're doing with it. And if anyone's listening and you haven't actually watched the show yet, please uh, go out and watch it. Like it, check yeah, it the out. Pilot is is really fun. Yeah, it's definitely. Worth what is it like uh 25 minutes or so? like it's not yeah uh, not super long a over so. a half hour yeah it's not bad yeah or check it hour. out it's a good time yeah yeah awesome well and thank you everyone for listening to the the bible artist podcast and godspeed